Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about momentum, the center of mass, and how momentum and center of mass can tell you about your heart heat health on a toilet seat. Um, let's start with the center of mass uh, equation here. And so that's just the M1X1 plus M2X2 over the total mass, M1 plus M2. And what I want to do here is use this equation to look at changes over time in the center of mass position. So I want to look at the change in the center of mass position over time. And if you look at this equation up here, uh, the M masses are not going to change. You imagine you have a system and there's several particles in there, and those masses of those particles are not changing. What is changing is the positions of those particles. So I'm just going to put this through here. This is the change in the position of particle one over time plus the change in position of particle two over time over the total mass. All right, so now that looks uh, pretty useful. Now, remember this is the M1 plus M2. That's just the total mass of the system. Let me multiply that by, on bo by both sides to move it over to the other side. So that's going to be the total mass. And then what does this mean here? This term here is going to be the well, that looks like a velocity, right? A delta x over delta t. And in fact, it's the velocity of the center of mass. So that's telling us how the center of mass for the whole system is moving. Um, the, uh, these terms look like m1 times the velocity 1. That's the velocity of particle 1 in the system. And same with particle 2, uh, m2 velocity 2. And those actually look like momenta. And that's what they are. So this is the momentum of particle 1, the momentum of particle 2. If we had more particles, then we would just add those up too. Well, this is just the total momentum of the system. And that's just the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass. Okay. So this is telling us how the velocity of the center of mass of the system moves. And if you remember to connect it back with force, if the external force external forces on a system are zero, this tells us that the momentum is conserved. That is the total momentum of the system, which means that if this is conserved, that means that the velocity of the center of mass does not change. Okay. If there's no external forces, the velocity of the center of mass does not change for a system. So let's look at a particular system that we, we've seen before, the ice skating uh, system here. So you have these two people, and they're pushing it on each other, and they're on ice. And of course, the forces on each other, as they push on each other and exchange momentum, the forces are equal and opposite. And as we discussed before, the momenta they exchange are equal and opposite. But because this person is 50 kilograms and this person is twice the mass, 100 kilograms, the velocity here is twice as big as the velocity the, per the other person has, right? What this tells us is that these two forces are internal forces. Therefore, they, are, they do not change the center of mass velocity. The center of mass um, velocity in this case, in the beginning, the center of mass was just sitting there. And when they push on each other, those are not external forces. And so they cannot change the center of mass velocity. And the center of mass position for these two stays there, even though this one is zipping off this way at twice the speed of that one. Wow, that's interesting. So this is worth repeating. Internal forces do not change the center of mass velocity you need an external force. And so intuitively, we know that if we wanted to get ourselves up in the air, we don't reach down with our hands and pull up on our legs. Because what happens is as we pull a force up on our legs, our legs then put a force down on our hands. And these are both equal and opposite because of Newton's third law. The total force on our body because of this is going to be zero. And we are going to go nowhere. Instead, we need an external force to change our center of mass velocity. So what we do is we push down on the ground, which is external to our body. The ground pushes back up on us, puts an external force on us. And that is how we change our center of mass velocity. Now, there's a very interesting um, application of this 
uh, that connects with the toilet seat thing that I talked about in the very beginning. Um, this is uh, called a ballistic cardiogram. So what you do is you have a patient lie down on this bed and there's rollers so there's no friction. There's no external forces. It's kind of like the ice situation here. And as the uh, patient's heart pumps blood, it shoots a blood up into the aorta. And so there's some uh, uh, blood velocity this way, and the body will recoil and get an equal and opposite momentum the other direction. Of course, because their blood is so much uh, less massive in their, than their body, their body is more massive, kind of like this situation, the velocity of their uh, body will be much smaller than the velocity of their blood. But still, their body is connected to this roller thing, and what you're going to see is they'll shift backwards and forwards as their heart beats. And so what they do is they connect this to some kind of pen and a, a device that can write on the paper, and you'll see the person's, as their heart beats, you'll see that indicate on through the motion of the overall system with the rollers as their um, uh, because of the recoil velocity from their blood. Um, meanwhile, during this whole thing, because these two are internal forces, the velocity of the center of mass of the whole system, the blood and the body and the person all together, that does not change, even if the velocity of the body does change back and forth because of the velocity of the blood is going the other way. What scientists did is they actually connected, made one of these that connects to a toilet seat. So when you sit on the toilet seat, it has some force sensors in addition to a bunch of other sensors that detect the recoil velocity of your body when your heart beats through force sensors. And it can tell you about, um, it has a bunch of other sensors that can monitor other things uh, that uh, tally up to heart health. Um, by the way, this is called a um, ballistocardiogram. And uh, you should look that up. Uh, it's, it's used a long time ago before EKGs became popular. Then once EKGs, these fell out of favor. But they are still used in some scenarios, and they still have something they can tell you about heart health.